So for those of you tuning in for part two, welcome back. If you missed part one, make sure to go check that out. It will cover building the model up to this point. This is the 172nd Airfix Spitfire Mark 1A. And uh, part two is going to focus on finishing the model, airbrushing the airframe, applying some weathering effects, and adding the various parts and pieces to uh, finish the build. Before we get going, I want to highlight a couple things. One, the use of primers, and two, the use of pre-shading or black basing or any other type of pre-shading effect when you're airbrushing. As far as primers, I don't always prime my models. Certainly on a bare metal finish, I would, but on something like this where I'm doing a relatively quick build, I'm pretty confident that the surface finish is decent. I usually get very good adherence of the acrylic paints I use to the base plastic, so I kind of skip that step. Second is the idea of pre-shading. I'm still a little bit old school. I like to pre-shade the panel lines, which means I take the airbrush and airbrush a light coat of a dark color, usually something like a NATO black or a, or a flat black, even right along the panel lines. That way when we come back over with the lighter coats of the camouflage color, you'll see a little a darkness around the panel lines. Uh, some guys like to do black basing, they call it, which is a technique where you take a dark color like black and you basically airbrush it all over the surface, leaving a little bit of a marbled effect, um, going kind of lighter and darker in some areas. And then when you spray the top coat over it, you'll get a, some tonal variation in that coat as well. Um, I don't really only use black basing when I'm doing a like a modern US Navy plane, something that might be an overall gray scheme because it really helps bring out variations in the gray. But for something that's going to be camouflaged like this, I stick to just a basic uh, panel line pre-shading. So easy enough. No need to have a real tight spray pattern on this because we're just adding some pre-shading to the panel lines. So when we come back over with the main colors, it, most of this will just be faded in. So for the primary colors, I'll be using paint from AK's uh, Extreme Metal line and Real Colors line. Um, the Extreme Metal line will be used for the aluminum undersurface, which is just a small segment here and then the real colors for everything else, including the white and black undersurfaces, and then the dark green and earth um, upper surfaces. Start the weathering process I'll use oil paint straight out of the tube with a little bit of white spirits and brush on along the panel lines and start to darken some of the recessed areas.
With the basic painting and the initial weathering complete, I can now put a gloss coat on it and um, once that dries, we'll get the decals down. Now with all the smaller bits painted, we can get them installed and wrap this build up. So there we go, got all the little bits installed, little antenna here, hard to see, made with Easy Line. You can probably see a little bit there. Got the prop on, the wheels on, made sure to install the wheels after the landing gear was done. That way we could make sure the flat spots were in the right position. Tail wheel on, new door that we scratch built has been installed. There you go. So that gives you an idea of what can be done with a $6 172nd Airfix kit. I think it turned out okay.